Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things, and I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Welcome to The Questions, Episode 80. Today, Christine asks... I am currently writing a science fiction novel set in the future after a major extinction event. The problem I seem to be having is that I don't really know if my story has an actual villain. There are a few antagonistic species, but overall no one is hell-bent on actually destroying the protagonist. Should I try harder to figure out a villain, or could I write a story without one? Any suggestions on how to do that? Well, Christine, regarding villains... Bear in mind that a villain's function in a story is to provide a persistent source of conflict and threat. You don't actually need one if you have persistent sources of conflict and threat in the rest of the story, whether that source is the environment, an impossible situation, or a relationship problem between two people who aren't actually bad people, or, in the case of your book, a post-apocalyptic world that the people are trying to eke out survival in. Now, you do need the conflict. Your main character needs to suffer, and needs to suffer in a way that escalates over the course of the story, so that the danger and peril and suffering scales with the abilities of your character as they grow through their um, struggles. And the actions your character take need eventually to be directly responsible for either ending the suffering or getting themselves into a position where the things that were making them suffer don't make them suffer anymore. Unless, of course, you're writing literary science fiction where passive main characters are allowed, because passivity in a character is a well-established trope in literary fiction, which is one of the reasons it doesn't sell as well. And I suppose I should mention that the suffering needs to be connected to the goals of the main character. In this case, it's fairly obvious they're trying to survive, and their attempts to survive will um, invariably cause trouble, and that trouble causes the suffering. But it's the connection between the suffering and the goal of the character that makes it relatable, interesting, and gripping for the audience. If your character's trying to get to the store and he's suffering terribly because he hit his finger with the hammer before he left home, well, that doesn't affect his ability to walk or drive, and it doesn't really affect his goal of getting to the store or of buying things in the store. It just means that he's got a thumb ache. That's not a kind of suffering that your audience will relate to. Whereas if your character hit his thumb with a hammer and then his child got injured on the same job site and he needs that thumb in order to staunch the bleeding or manipulate the first aid kit so he can tape the wound shut or whatever it is, that is suffering that directly affects his goals and that is interesting. So that's something worth bearing in mind. So some stories have villains and some don't and you're writing a story without a villain. And if you've not seen that done before, it might help you to get familiar with that whole tradition. It happened actually a lot back in the pulp era and the Victorian era. It was the theme of man against nature was a huge source of conflict, or man against the gods or the fates. And so there were a lot of really great books written that didn't really have a villain, but still had wonderful gripping adventure. One that's directly applicable to the kind of story you're writing is a novel called Earth Abides by George Stewart, which is fantastic. It was the first big post-apocalyptic book set after a plague in California. It is absolutely wonderful. It's a really good read. Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, where the main source of conflict is exploring through a jungle and trying to survive on a plateau with prehistoric humans and animals. Robert Heinlein's Tunnel in the Sky, about a survival class that gets stranded on an alien and dangerous planet and has to figure out how to band together to survive until rescue comes, if it ever does. 
Again, no villains, just a lot of interesting characters in an impossible situation, with conflict coming both between the characters, all of whom are good people with good intentions, and from the threat that the environment poses against them. Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, which is about Alice's struggles to make sense of what's going on, it's basically a fantastical traveler's tale, and there are a lot of minor antagonists, but there's no big bad guy in that one. There's A Christmas Carol, and if you think carefully about A Christmas Carol, there aren't any bad guys in that either. It, like Through the Looking Glass, is a traveler's tale, and the travels that Scrooge embarks on with the aid of the three ghosts are what affect the transformation in him and end his suffering. And, uh, of course, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory... Again, another traveler's tale, a uh, ripping good adventure, and no real bad guy. Some of those I'm sure you've already read, or at least seen a filmed version of them. The rest really are well worth looking into. All of them are very short, except for Earth Abides. Earth Abides is a little long. Well, it's a little longer than the rest of them. It's not what we would call long by today's standards. They're all fairly short, they're all really good reads, and they're all fairly easy reads. And I would highly recommend collecting them all and taking a week and sitting down and just reading through them one after another. It'll really help you sink into the sorts of things that can go on in a story where you don't have a villain pushing your hero's buttons all the time. And doing that will break you out of the mental constraints that you've got yourself locked into that a lot of us in the current era get locked into from time to time which is envisioning a story as a struggle between a hero and a villain, or a group of heroes and a villain. That's a very easy form of conflict to write, because it's instantly accessible to any audience, and it doesn't require a lot of cash to produce it on television. So it makes up a big part of the baseline for the Hollywood plot formula, which is why we're so trained to think in those terms. But doing that exercise should help you break out of that prison. I hope that helps. And I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at NaNoWriMoEveryMonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar or join the Patreon to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2016 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution no derivatives license.